Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here, and I'm in the You Send It office with me here, Nanavati, and we're going to look at some of the features of You Send It that exist today, and then we'll be looking at some applications that they have coming out. And for people who don't know, what is You Send It? Uh, you Send It is a company that does cloud-based content management and uh, collaboration services. Uh, particularly what it means is uh, most people have uh, thought about you send it from the standpoint of sending files that are too large to send over email and uh, that made the company really successful in that category for a long time and over the past year we've really evolved the company into offering more products and services that are related to content uh, that's managed and uh, uh, shared through the cloud um, and so we have uh, products that really take you in the direction of content syncing mobile access, shared folders, and so on. All right, well, let's take a look at demo so that people get a better idea of what we're looking at. Awesome. Um, so here in, in front of you is our uh, standard application that most people use to send files through you send it. And, and it goes in a very straightforward way where you type in the email address of the person you want to send the file to, you type in a subject, um, you, you put in a message if you want, and you pick a file from your computer. So this has uh, typically worked very well where you can pick files that you want to uh, send to recipients and um, you simply send, uh, se send files. Uh, from time to time we ask you to upgrade your account and that really leads us to our business model which is a freemium business model. Now in this case what we have begun to do is uh, expose the uh, availability of the new services uh, within the model that people have been used to. So at this point uh, you've just sent a file. And now we ask the user, do you want to keep a copy of this in cloud folders? And if you keep a copy, you'd, you'd be able to have access to this file on a variety of devices, on a variety of platforms. So let's say they go in there and they put this file in their home directory. Um, it, and these are cloud folders. Um, and once they do that, they now have that file, which they just sent to the recipient, available for them to use wherever they are. So, 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 and uh, this is like cloud storage of, of the files that you're sending, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And uh, the difference between this and the traditional service is that these files are persistent in the cloud. In this model, it's all persistent. It's always available to you wherever you are. So this is kind of uh, possibly a reaction to Dropbox and Box.net and things like that, um, offering a um, alternative means of, of accessing files. Um, that's true, although the way we see it is that uh, the, the solutions that are evolving uh, are offering cloud-based solutions in a variety of forums. And it's not just these guys that you mentioned. Almost every service is evolving its offerings to make it much more cloud-friendly. And storage is just a means to an end. Uh, really, our customers are asking us for more and more capabilities such as mobile access, such as enterprise governance, and so on. And so storage is one aspect. And so, yes, absolutely, these these guys have offered uh, storage-based solutions, and we do as well. Uh, but our intent is really to offer much more secure and collaboration solutions for our customers. And in terms of how much available storage, uh, in, in, is this storage available in the free version as well as pay versions? And is there more if you pay? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you, you get up to 2 gigs of storage for free users. And, uh, in, and then we have a couple of subscription plans that start at $10 and $15 a month. The $15 a month subscription plan gives you unlimited storage for everything. Uh, in that plan, you get really no barriers. Uh, you, you can store as much as you want. You can share as much as you want. You can sign as many documents as you want. And I'll show some of that as well. All right. Well, let's take a look at that. Absolutely. So if you look at uh, the folders tab over here, what you see is an organization of your cloud content. You can create folders. You can add files to these folders and you can begin to share uh, with other people. So let's say I go in there and I create a folder and I call it, you know, for Jake. Um, and then I can add a file in this folder. Um, as soon as, uh, as, soon as uh, I, I add any content, it's going to be stored there uh, persistently. And this goes to the same data center that we have been scaling over the past four years. So that's really leveraging and proving our scale, if you will. Um, I can take these folders and begin to share them with others. So this share button here uh, invokes a similar um, dialogue where I can invite other people to the folder. And as soon as I invite these people, they'll be able to have access to this folder. Now, we introduce a notion of uh, permissions. There are a couple of permissions for sharing folders, uh, read, write, and read only. And uh, a lot of our users tell us, you know, there's not one way 
through which uh, people collaborate. In some, some cases, they want the ability to collaborate in a passive manner where, you know, if I want to share a folder with you, but I don't want you to mess with my files, I don't want you to delete my files, I want to share the folder in a read-only mode with you. On the other hand, you know, I trust someone like you, you know, thoroughly, in which case I want you to be able to add content to my folder that would give you a read-write access to the folder. And so we give these two permission levels for the user to decide when sharing a folder. And as soon as they make that decision, they share the folder and it's done. From the, from the owner's standpoint, uh, uh, they are done. The recipient will get a notification saying, Mihir has invited Jake to this folder. Go ahead and accept the invitation and they'll be able to access the contents of that folder. And so here you can see the icon uh, changing state in uh, indicating to you that it's actually a shared folder as opposed to any other folder that's available for your private consumption. So that's uh, sharing uh, in brief. And so is this something that is entirely a like browser-based application, or is there a desktop component to it as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, there is a desktop component to it. There's a mobile component to it, and I'll show that in a minute as well. If you if you noticed, while I was adding some of these uh, files, uh, I was getting desktop notifications in the in the desktop application as well. So if you have a desktop application installed on your computer, you would see um, the files sync natively in your file system. Excellent. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that because I think that that is a new feature if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. That is absolutely a new feature and, and you're right, there's others in the marketplace providing similar solutions like SugarSync and Dropbox and so on. And we believe we have we have done a really good job of simplifying the entire experience for them. All right, well let's check that out too. Okay. Um so he, here's uh what you would see in terms of the sync application. Uh it resides natively in your platform and you invoke it and it's showing you all of your you send it content in your file system so we sync these files in the file system you just saw me create a folder called for jake on the web browser it's automatically available here the file that i added to the folder is also automatically available here uh, if i go in there and i make any edits to this file it'll automatically be reflected in terms of changes to the cloud too so if i go in there and i make a change uh, and I hit save, these changes will be automatically reflected uh, through the access to this file on any device or browser. Um, and these icons really reflect whether or not the changes have been synced. So if I see a green checkbox icon, let's make this a little bigger so you can uh, see the icon slightly bigger. So here you can see these green icons that reflect the sync state. Um, this means what you see here is the same content that you would see in the cloud. Um, and if there was any change happening, you would see the icon changing its state to show the fact that it's changing. Uh, furthermore, you can uh, share these folders natively from within here as well. So if we see an icon that represents the you send it uh, folder. You can sh take any of these folders and share them uh, from within the interface here. So you're not really required to go off to a browser and invoke another application to share folders. It's all natively integrated into the use in the file explorer, or in this case, the finder. And I, and I assume this is both Windows and Mac compatible. Absolutely. Um, this application uh, will launch on the 13th in beta. This is, a window, this is a Mac application. Our Windows application is available for people to use, for, and it can be downloaded from our website today. Um. One of the questions that I have, because one of the things that we run into in collaborating is that uh, I may have a, a massive uh, folder of, of videos that, that I want to keep that I may only want to sync a couple of them over to someone else who, uh, and, and like using like say a Dropbox as, as an example where if, if I have a pro account and somebody else doesn't have a pro account, I can easily like max out their account. How do you guys address a, a issue of one person having a different account status than another. Yeah, that's a really good uh, use case. Uh, if you have a premium account, uh, which gives you unlimited storage, you can rest assured you can share that folder with others, even though they may have a free account, their restriction will not be impacted. What that means is, uh, let's say you have a set of videos that is 10 gigs in size, you put them in a folder, and you share it with me, and if I have a free account, even though I may have only two gigs of storage, we have a feature that we call uh, that folder a paid folder. 
and it respects that and it lets me have access to the contents of that 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 folder even though I, I may have a free account which limits me to two gigs of storage so uh, okay so we've seen the desktop version and what features that uh, are, are here in the desktop that, that then translate over to say like the iPhone, the iPad, all of these various mobile devices that, that we are all carrying around with us these days. Yeah. All of these capabilities, whether you are sending files, sharing folders, signing files, or just simply accessing these content, um, are available on all of these devices natively integrated. So we believe that very strongly in um, a, a workflow where it's seamless, uh, whether you want to send files or sign files or share folders, these are core features of our apps that will be available on all platforms. So you saw us taking a lot of uh, you know, pain to make sure we bring in sharing of folders natively present here. Uh, I'll show you we can do the same things on the iPhone application and Android application and the iPad application. All of these applications will behave fairly similarly in terms of providing you access to this full suite of services. All right, I would, I would love to see that. Awesome, so uh, let's change gears and uh, bring up the iPhone application. We saw the desktop version of you send it on a Mac, also of course already available on Windows. And now we're going to look at the mobile version, which is available for iPhone, Android, and iPad, uh, with native versions for each. And what uh, what do, what do you see as being kind of the the key reasons that you need to be on all the mobile platforms? Yeah, so we look at of course uh, what our users are using in terms of uh, their computing devices. We believe that uh, a lot of our uh, customers are using mobile and tablet platforms uh, as their primary computing devices as more and more work gets done remotely. Uh, you know, nowadays there's a very much of a blurring of the lines between uh, home and work, and we've spoken to enough of our users that really validates that trend. Um, so whether you're waiting for uh, your daughter's soccer game and doing some work, or, or if you are actually bringing home uh, items at work, it's all interlinked. Uh, and you do all of that through devices that are always available to you in your um, in your hands. And um, as such, we looked at uh, mobile uh, as an important platform. Now, within mobile, which platforms to focus on is really tied to the market share of the the major players in the space. And if you just look at um, Apple and Google, they have really been uh, you know Google is doing a really fantastic job of of um, increasing the market share for Android. And of course, we pay careful attention to that. Uh, we look at uh, the market share numbers for iOS devices and iOS distribution on, on, on their operating system. And based on these, we make decisions in terms of what platforms to support. In terms of uh, using it on a mobile device, do you have just the ability to like access the files that you have shared already remotely that are stored in, the, in that online storage space? Or can I actually directly add a file that is local on my device that I can then uh, push out through you send it? Absolutely. You can uh, do more such as add files from email attachments directly into the you send it application. You can capture content uh, like, uh, you know, I can take a picture right now and add it directly to my cloud content through the mobile application. I can share all of this content natively from within the application. I can sign uh, files that are onto the application as well. So you can uh, rest assured that all of these services that we offer, whether it's sending or sharing or signing or access to content, is going to be integrated and made available through all of these mobile platforms. All right, well, let's take a look at how um, you can pick whichever device you want. We'll, we'll take a look at how the application works. Okay, so here you can see your email content and in email you may have an attachment. So let's take an attachment that is in this email. This is actually an NDA document, it's a PDF. I can open this attachment and you send it. And when I do that, it'll ask me to save this attachment somewhere. So let's put it in your folder for Jake. And this uh, really what it does is it brings these files um, into that folder. And so you asked the question earlier about um, adding files to folders onto the mobile devices and, 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 and tablets, and here's how you can do that. And so once I have this file, I can now navigate to this file and uh, make sure I, I can view this file from within the application. Um, and so here you can see the non-disclosure agreement, and I've brought this up in, within the application. I can take uh, an action such as sending this file through you send it, 
or I can just send a link uh, to this file through email or just copy the link to the clipboard so I can embed it in some other document. So I can take those actions on the file. Uh, but one of the most uh, exciting ones for us is the ability to sign on this document. Because this is an NDA, I will show you an example where I use my fingers to add my signature. And uh, it really takes my signature and, and inserts it into this document. And I can add uh, other things like today's date and insert that into the document as well. And I can add my uh, title and things like that. And once I'm done, I simply hit save. And I can choose to keep a copy of this signed document in my cloud folders. Or I can send it back to the requester. So a very simple use case that we find is um, you may have received a file from someone saying, I need this signed. And so the way you can do this is open this up from email. Bring this into you send it, sign it, and then send it back to them. It takes all of 30 seconds to do something that used to take minutes or hours based on whether or not you had a fax machine or a scanner and so on. So we're really replacing the uh, fax machine in this case, and we are uh, reinventing the model of printing and scanning and faxing. So that's uh, signing. And, and if you go back to the application, you'll see all of the folders. You can navigate through any of these folders. and uh, uh, you can access any of these files from these folders. So let's say I go in here, I look at some screenshots, and I can look at every screenshot from within here. Uh, I can take any of these folders and start sharing them as well. So if I click on this uh, button that says share this folder, I can begin to share this folder with others. And if I wanted to bring in my contacts, and I can bring in the contacts directly from here, so I don't have to remember their email addresses. And uh, as soon as I'm ready, I'll just hit send, and then it gives them an invitation to this folder. And you saw all of these icons have changed their state, which show the fact that it's a shared folder. So that's uh, you know our mobile application in brief. Uh, you can access content, you can share content, you can send files, you can sign files, everything natively from within the iPad application. Now, is the content of these folders that you're browsing here, is that all stored locally in the memory of the mobile device? Or is it not actually brought uh, into the storage on the device until I've, I've pulled up the file? Yeah, it's the latter. Uh, so as long as you are just navigating the directory structure, we're not pulling anything. Um, if you have asked for the file to be viewed, uh, so for instance, if I click on this file, it will download the file and, and preview it natively here. So at that time, will it be uh, available in local storage? And when we do that, we encrypt it. So uh, all of this content is encrypted and decrypted so that, uh, you know, for instance, if you leave this device and, and walk away, um, it's, it's, so you, you, you can be assured that it's not going to fall in the wrong hands. It's all protected. Nice. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to try this out as soon as, I, as, soon as the Android application is, is available for download. I'm, I'm definitely going to try it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the Android application will be available on December 13th as well. And it does all of these things that I just showed you also on the Android device. Now, in terms of the document signing component on a desktop system, does that also work? Yes. Um, you can go into the, uh, the application in the browser. And there's a tab called Sign. You can bring up the file from either your local, local file storage or your cloud folders. And then uh, sign it natively in the browser itself. This video has been brought to you by GoToManage. Try GoToManage free for 45 days by entering the code Perillo45.